What's up everybody? Welcome back to my kitchen and thank you for coming to check out what Billy B cooking today. Uh, today we got something special. Uh, one of my really, really good friends, Todd, shout out to Todd. Uh, it's his birthday tomorrow. So I'm uh, unbeknownst to him. I know that's a big word. I can't spell it, but it fits right there. Uh, without him knowing, I'm making him uh, one of his favorite dishes. Something he's asked me to make the past couple months and I've been pushing it off, pushing it off. Um, we're gonna do it for his birthday. Uh, we're doing a Billy B meatloaf. Um, so what we're gonna do, and we're just gonna jump right into it. This ain't gonna be a long video. Everybody knows how to make meatloaf, but I'm gonna show you how I make it. And I'm gonna show you the love I put in here. Cause Todd, uh, you're a cool dude. I appreciate the shit out of you. Um, so I'm starting out with two pounds of hamburger meat. Uh, also, we're going in with uh, got some chopped onions. Um, I'm going to just throw these in as we're talking. That way, that's how meatloaf works. All right. So, let me, get, uh, let me get my doctor on. All right, we're all prepped up for surgery. Uh, now we can get busy. So, uh, I got about three quarters of a large onion, uh, large white onion. I love the taste of onion. Going with that. I'm going in with two large eggs. Just like that. Beautiful. All right, we're going in with about a three-quarter cup of uh, panko breadcrumbs. That's going to be the binder that holds the meat together along with the egg. I'm going in with, uh, I won't say it, but you can read it. <laughs> say so spice seasoning. Slap somebody's mama. It's the season. Uh, also going in with smoked paprika. Yeah, we can use a shaker. Uh, no. Smoked paprika. That's going to give it a good smoke flavor and uh, some good color too. Uh, probably about a, about a tablespoon of that. We're going in with some amazing uh, Maggie seasoning. You know, this is one of my favorite ingredients to use. So this couple of dashes of Maggie is pretty strong stuff. Uh, also, I almost forgot, uh, my secret ingredient, umami powder. Umami powder, it's a mushroom powder and it gives a savory flavor like bacon does. So we're going in with some umami. That's gonna cook down wonderful. Also, I want to go in with a little bit. Of, I wasn't prepared to have it out here, but it just psh, psh, hit me. So I'm going in with a little bit of cumin. Not much. Cumin's a, uh, a pretty strong flavor, but you need it when you need it. And if you know, you know. And uh, going in with some rum boogies, spicy barbecue. My uncle, uh, he taught me how to make meatloaf, and he used to... Uh, he used to use uh, Heinz 57. I haven't seen that. I don't know if they still make Heinz 57. I ain't seen it in years, but it used to be a delicious mustard-based barbecue sauce. Well, this Rum Boogie's uh, spicy barbecue sauce, it's a mustard base as well. It's amazing. Oh, it's got such a good flavor. So we're going in with a little bit of that, probably about two teaspoons, two tablespoons, excuse me, of Rum Boogie's. Uh, I'm going in with some garlic and herb paste. Um, I like the paste a little bit better for this because if I chop my own fresh garlic, then there's just going to be parts and pieces of garlic that you might not get in every bite. But with this paste, you will. And probably going in with about a tablespoon of that. And y'all know my new favorite, the Chipotle puree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's amazing. This is going to have a little kick to it. But I think uh, old Todd Boyle appreciate it. Let's see here. We're going in probably, 
I'm gonna go a half a tablespoon, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy, half a tablespoon of that. Then uh, we just get it all uh, salt and peppered. Excuse me. Don't forget about salt and pepper. And after the salt and pepper, uh, I'm going in with about two tablespoons of fresh parsley. I, I just like the taste of parsley in this. Um, and it's gonna add a pop of color throughout. I'm gonna save some of the parsley for garnish after the fact. Also, we're gonna be doing a um, Billy B's mashed potatoes to go with this meatloaf. Um, I got uh, two links down below of uh, two different types of ways I've cooked mashed potatoes in the past. Um, today, we are gonna do uh, just a home style um, garlic butter mashed potatoes. Um, the other two links are two other different ways you can do your mashed potatoes, but you can check that out later. And now we're just going to fold all these ingredients together. You want to bust up the egg yolks, get it all combined. You don't want to beat up the meat, right? Because uh, you can over, you can over mix your hamburger meat and just beat it up to where it's just nasty. Well, not nasty, but it's going to have a... A harder consistency it ain't gonna be as fluffy as a meatloaf if that makes any sense just kind of fold it on top of each other and when I say fold just kind of grab the bottom reach over the top push down you're just folding it on top of each other all right so now that that's good and incorporated I got our oven that hurt I got our oven preheated to 375 degrees and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here uh, if you got one of these, it'd be a lot easier for you. You don't need one. I mean, you can do this on a sheet pan if you want to. Just make sure your meat's cold after you get it mixed. Form it in a patty on a sheet pan. Put it in the refrigerator so it holds its shape. Put it in the refrigerator a little bit just to cool up and firm up. Then you can put it in the oven and do it that way. Or if you do happen to have a meatloaf pan, uh, this is amazing because... You set your meat here, after it cooks, you just lift it out and all the grease and oil stays in the bottom. And I got shit all over here. <laughs> anyway, so after you get this uh, all incorporated and folded, just take some out and just lay it in. Lay it in, right? And you don't want to form it hard and then just mush it all in here. Is like you say, you still want it kind of light and airy. So it's not so dense and tough after you get it cooked. You don't push down too hard or whatever. Just make sure you get all the air pockets out and get it uniform. You know, Billy B likes to put butter on every piece of the bread, even the crust. And I want you to taste flavor in every single bite of whatever it is I cook for you. So let's get it all down there. Okay. And just, uh, I kind of rub my fingers around the end of it just to keep that loaf shape, you know, of a meatloaf. But that's, that's about it. That's about it. Just get the top like that. We're going to... Uh, we're going in the oven for about 35, 40 minutes, uh, just like this. And uh, it being ground beef or hamburger meat, you want the internal temperature uh, 165. 165 is what's going to be great. Now, when we pull this out in about 30 or 40 minutes, it might be a little less than that. But uh, that's because I'm. Uh, we're going to be cooking or cooking. We're going to be making a topping to go over the top of this. Like as a kid, my mom used to always just put ketchup on the top, throw it back in the oven, let that ketchup kind of bake on top of it. It was delicious, but we're adults now. Our palates have uh, kind of grown up and got educated. So we're going to do a little something different with the ketchup. Uh, we'll see you in just a little bit. Oh, a quick side note. I know y'all might have seen this on the side and was like, oh, Billy B, you forgot about... No, I didn't. Uh, what we're going to do with this here, um, I don't know if you can see it, Big Mo Casin. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, he, he's a um, he's an award-winning barbecue grill master, right? Y'all might have seen him on TV doing those barbecue shows. Uh, he has some amazing rubs in uh, Win Dixie stores. So I like to take this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sprinkle over the top. And we ain't gonna do it thick enough to like make a crust like you would on a Boston butt or ribs, as it says. But I am gonna put that seasoning on here and it's just gonna bake into it. This is gonna be amazing, trust me. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven and we'll be back in just a bit. All right, so I told y'all uh, we're going with some uh, mashed potatoes too. So those are boiling on the stove, if you can hear them, I apologize. Uh, they're gonna keep going for another 10 minutes. We got about 10 minutes in the oven uh, for the meatloaf. And so while that's going, we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce for the top and we're gonna do the sides to just get it all covered. Uh, first, uh, start off two tablespoons of brown sugar. And we're going in with some uh, ketchup. And probably about Excuse me, it's been a long day, real long day. Probably about uh, three tablespoons of ketchup. You want more ketchup than you do uh, brown sugar. I'm going in with some liquid smoke, just because <laughs> that's fire if you use it correctly. That's good stuff. Uh, a little bit, a couple dashes, nothing crazy, a couple dashes. And I know you see the, the country crock up here. What the hell is that for? Uh, that's special. Uh, tell me if you've ever heard this before. When we pull the meatloaf out of the oven, we're going to let it cool for just a bit. We're going to let it rest for a minute. And then uh, probably about five minutes. And then we're going to take some of this butter and we're going to spread it over the top. Uh, now, the country crock, this butter's got uh, milk proteins and stuff in it. So you don't want to cook with it above like 250 degrees or so. Or you could burn it like in a frying pan if you're trying to, um, you know, saute stuff. But the way we're going to use it today, we're kind of, we're kind of defying science, if you will. Because I'm going to put this butter over the top of the meatloaf, let it melt down into the meatloaf. And then we're going over the top of the meatloaf, which will cover the top of that butter with this here. And this will kind of block or add a barrier over the butter to where the heat from the oven won't burn the butter, but it's gonna coat this seasoning here, the topping. We'll call it the topping. We can keep the butter from burning and the butter can seep into the meat. <laughs> it's good. God, no, it's gonna be so delicious. It's gonna be better butter, trust me. So, we got that in it. Plenty of ketchup, plenty of brown sugar, good enough amount of smoke. Uh, what else do we want to add to this? And one of the main things I want you to take away from my channel, when you cook something, whatever it is, I mean, certain things have specific things you need to use to make it that. Like for instance, when I made the, uh, the steak Diane, right? <laughs> this is one of my favorite steak sauces. But in the Diane sauce, you have to use cognac, you have to use like a Marcella wine or something like that in order to get the flavor of what a steak Diane flavor is. But other than that, play around with your ingredients. You know what I mean? Like I said, this is meatloaf and we're creating a topping for meatloaf where my mom would just sprinkle, catch, sprinkle. <laughs> she just put ketchup on the top of the meatloaf after it was done, put it back in the oven for five minutes and let it coat the top of the meatloaf and it is ketchup, which is great. Or some other people like to use like a, a spaghetti sauce or a marinara on top of their meatloaf. And that's great too. We're making our own. So look in your spice cabinet, see what appeals to you. What do you think? Oh, that would be amazing with this. And I think I can use this and this and make it your own. That's what we're gonna do. So right now we just got a little bit of liquid smoke. We got some brown sugar and we got some ketchup. Let me start these potatoes. Excuse me for a second. While the potatoes are boiling, I don't want them to sit on the bottom and burn. 
We'll just start them every once in a while. So what else we gonna go with ketchup? This ketchup's got a tangy sweet. Then we uh, then we got the brown sugar, which of course is sweet. We got a smoke. Let's add a little bit of heat, shall we? Just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go with. I have uh, some Cholula Chipotle. I don't know if you can see that. I apologize. The halo with this. Hey, I'm not good with cameras. I'm just a dancing monkey and want y'all to watch me play. I'm going to do it behind the scenes. So I'm going to do a Chipotle hot sauce. And if you remember, I added a little bit of Chipotle uh, puree with the meat loaf. So this is going to just kind of accent that a little bit and kind of work with it. That's going to be your heat to offset the sweet of the brown sugar. This is, I, it just sounds amazing so far. Okay. Let's get that stirred up. We probably got another five minutes on everything. So we got plenty of time, plenty of time. Let's look in here and see if there's anything else we want to incorporate. Uh, we'll go with that cabinet hmm. I think I'm going to go with a little bit of oregano oregano is amazing on everything so I love oregano like you, you heard me say before not a lot of people know but if you go to a subway to get you a sandwich they, you ask them for some oregano. They keep it under the counter, but they got it. Ask them to put oregano on your sandwich and put a lot of oregano on your Subway sandwich. It will enhance the flavor so much. You're welcome. So I'm going to just put a little bit of oregano in here. Like I said, uh, after the meatloaf comes out, we're going to coat the top of this, uh, the top of the meatloaf with this. And uh, you don't want the oregano to burn or anything, but you want to incorporate it into the the liquids here, this sauce, so it's just going to enhance the flavor. All right, so everything else uh, looks good, like onion powder. We got onions in the meatloaf already. Garlic powder, we got garlic paste in there already. Uh, thyme, we got oregano in there. I think we're good. Cayenne pepper, nah, we added the chipotle hot sauce, we're good. Lemon pepper, wouldn't do good in this, uh, based on the flavors. We got lemon pepper and brown sugar, really. You see what I'm saying? Just look in your spice rack, see what sounds good to you. Throw it in, throw it in. And if you're even questionable about it, put a little to the side and then taste it. See what you think. Trust me, you surprise yourself. You're a surprise yourself. So I think we're good so far uh, with the seasonings. Let's give a little taste test and we'll actually see. Damn. God. Oh, that, that's delicious. Oh, crap, that's delicious. Um, that is, that is great. God, oh, that is delicious. Um, it's really sweet, though. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit more heat, like, just now, a little bit of that Chipotle hot sauce is coming through. Um, but the sweet, like, it's a delicious sweet. Um, but I'm going to go in with a little bit more. Because this Chalupa, like, I love spicy food. So I could be biased. But this Cholula Chipotle, like, Cholula is a great hot sauce. The regular flavor. But it's not a like a Tabasco hot, like it don't burn you. It's just got a really good flavored hot sauce. And the Chipotle Cholula 
is even a little less hot, but it's got a chipotle smoke flavor. So I'm gonna just add some more of this, kind of kick it up a notch. But that is, that's got a great sweet flavor to it. God, dog, the ketchup and the brown sugar. I'm gonna add a little bit of more uh, smoke flavor. And that's applewood smoke, by the way. Uh, in case you were wondering, let's go ahead and whisk that up. But yeah, you can taste the oregano, the, everything. I hear you. But uh, the meatloaf's ready to be taken out for the sauce. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out after I, let me taste the sauce one more time real quick. But this is a good thick consistency and that's how you want it. You don't want it runny. You don't want this runny because you just want it to set on the top as you go back in the oven. I'm like a kid at Christmas. Oh, what's this present going to be? It still tastes great. Hold on. I know this one. Some more of this puree. That's what it is. A little bit of chipotle puree in there. Hey, 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 how you just going? I thought you was on my team. Let's try some of this puree. Oh man, that looks delicious. That <laughs> looks delicious. All right, let's check the internal temperature while we got it out. Um, if you don't have one, get you a meat thermometer. These are amazing. They're like 10, 15 bucks. They're not expensive at all. It's digital, uh, it's Insta read, and also it's even got the temperatures here on the side of what's safe to eat. So it kind of helps you out. So, we're about 165. We're about 157, 158 right now, which is perfect. Because what we want to do is like I said, we're gonna let that cool for a second. We're gonna add the butter to it, let the butter melt into it. Then we're gonna go over the top with this and then put it back in the oven for about 10 more minutes. And uh, by then the potatoes should be done. We'll be messing with those. So give me a second and we'll be right back. All right, so we got our butter on. We let our butter kind of set and get up in the creases and that. And then we took our spread which turned out amazing with that extra chipotle puree. That's exactly what it needed. It had the perfect spice to that sweet. And then we kind of put that on top. Now we're going back in the oven for about another 10 minutes. And then uh, the mashed potatoes, uh, the potatoes are finally cooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and get them mixed up and we'll be right back. Uh, I said we was gonna be right back. Actually, I'm gonna show you uh, my home style mashed potatoes. Uh, so, Get the potatoes cooked and drained. We're gonna put those in here. The butter, I let it get to room temperature. You don't wanna take cold butter and put them in your hot potatoes. It'll cool your potatoes off like that, the butter won't melt. So, uh, I got about three quarters of a stick of butter. Um, you can look at the steak. I'll tell you how many tablespoons or whatever. I'm going in with salt. Uh, potatoes have no flavor except potato, so it's gonna take a lot of salt. Uh, pepper, going in with pepper. Uh, going in with some more of my garlic and herb paste that we used for the uh, meatloaf, cause it is delicious. It's got garlic in it, of course, uh, but it's got fresh herbs, uh, thyme, rosemary, sage. This is great stuff. I'm going to. 
hit it with a touch of garlic powder, just because I like garlic. Um, I'm going to hit it with some heavy cream. Now, I should have kind of warmed the cream up too, but since the butter's already warmed up, I'm not that concerned about it. And here's a secret, don't tell everybody, I just want y'all to know, so you can eat as good as I do. Uh, eat a little ranch and your mashed potatoes, just a little bit. Uh, it don't really add, it don't add a ranch flavor, strangely enough, but it just gives it a creamier texture. And, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Everybody, if you ain't got one of these, you can take some, you can take a fork, bend the end of it to where the fork part is flat, and you can mash it. But just go on and mash it. Have fun with it. This is the fun part. Like, take all the frustrations of your day. Ugh, fuck these potatoes. Ugh. Take all, take all your frustrations out. Oh, uh, Facebook asked me if this was made for kids. Nah. Nah. I don't want kids to burn themselves trying to cook stuff, so I ain't, it ain't made for kids. So since it ain't made for kids, I can curse like that because my mom and dad ain't here. <laughs> Have fun, with, have fun with cooking. That, that's my only objective uh, with making these videos for y'all. Have fun with it. Just have a good time. And then by the time you get done having fun, you get to eat this amazing stuff. God, dog. Looking at it, it's not as yellow as I would look, so I bet I'm probably going to have to add a little more butter. But let's check. Let us check. Always check before you say you're through with something. God, all oh, this things are creamy. Mmm. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's pretty dang good. That's that's pretty dang good. Um, I might just add a touch more salt. Touch it. I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper, just a little bit more pepper. I can see pepper flakes in it, and that's what I like to see. But I just like a little bit more of a taste. Like I said, I'm a spice person. So that should be good. Let me get another taster spoon, because it's from my buddy Todd, too. I don't want to double dip. <laughs> I'll look it out for you, Todd. Alright, so one spoon that time. Alright, let's see. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. I've done it. I've done it. These, 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 are, yeah. Those are done. <laughs> Those are, can't get no better. Cannot get no better. Uh, we got three minutes on this amazing meatloaf. Uh, we just want to, like I said, we're going to take uh, the rest of this topping that we made, uh, that we put over top. We're just going to drape the sides around it like we're making a cake, right? Get, get flavor everywhere. Like I said, I like butter on every piece of my bread, crust to crust. There's flavor in every bite. So you just want to take and you just want to coat every bit of it that you can. Y'all can probably see that better than me. Am I, am I hitting all the spots? Now we're going to plate it and make it look pretty. Like I said, this is from my buddy Todd. Todd. As delicious as this is, dog, if I didn't like you, I, I'd eat this whole thing right up. I'd eat this whole thing right up. You know I love you, brother. I got you. I got you. Uh, let's see. Let's go on and cut this up. Let's get Todd some good, good sized pieces, right? Everybody loves the corner piece. So we're going to start out with that. And then uh, we're going to give him a second piece. Go on and give him two big old pieces. He might not be able to eat all this at one time. He could bring some home to his, to his lady friend. But since we're going to plate it, we've got to make it look nice. Let's dress it up a bit, shall we? Because we're going to take a pretty picture. 
Let's dress it up. Make the plate look nice and presentable. And let's take a picture. We'll use we'll use Todd's plate as the thumbnail to this video. What do y'all think? So that's all the restaurants do. Like me adding this parsley around the plate that's not even on the food, they're gonna charge you ten dollars more. <laughs> I'm not going to, but a restaurant will. Look at this, y'all. Tell me, would, would you? How much would you pay for that at a restaurant? I, I ain't asking because I'm gonna charge you or I'm opening a restaurant. Up. I'm just curious. Let me know down in the comments. I'm gonna take a picture real quick and we'll be right back. All right, so we got my buddy Todd's plate. Uh, happy birthday, brother! His birthday is tomorrow. Uh, I was able to make this so I can give it to him tomorrow. Everything works out fine. He's a peasy. Uh, but Uncle Billy got to get his piece of the pie. Now that I got me a little piece, let's go and take a taste test and see if this is worthy of my best friend's attention. All right. One of my best friends. Todd, I love you. I got two or three best friends. You one of them. God, toys. Falling apart, tender. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Todd. When you taste this, buddy. You won't even remember that I've been promising this to you for two months. <laughs> Just try this recipe. Let me know what you think. Hit me in the comments. And uh, as far as the potatoes, y'all watch me cook them, right? Let's see what happens. Oh, it's so creamy. It's <laughs> so creamy. Like I say, you can't taste no ranch dressing, but it just gives it this creaminess flavor to it that with the with the heavy whipping cream and that little bit of uh, ranch dressing and, you know, of course, salt and pepper. The butter. Put in that, you got to put enough butter to where you can taste the butter. Because plain potatoes, potatoes will eat up some butter. Like, it takes a bit to where you can get that butter flavor. Once you do... You will appreciate it so much. So please try this recipe. Let me know what you think. I'm fixing to make love to this plate. And I don't want nobody to watch that. So I'm going to let y'all go. But uh, once again, I love y'all so much. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. And I'll see you soon.